When I started designing in-ears over 13 years ago, my desire was to simply make authentic and inspiring products. I knew that would resonate with people and whether on stage or used as a personal listening device, I could give them something that would really inspire them. That pursuit led 64 Audio and myself to many interesting innovations. Just to name a few, it's Apex, it's TIA, it's LID technology. So in 2020, we brought to market this product called Neo. It was a successful recipe. A lot of people liked it. I personally loved the low mid and the mid section. It just sounded so inspiring, just so musical and uh, rich. We learned a lot of new things. Uh, even since the Neo, we've uh, discovered some, some new things about microacoustics, as I call them, that we could apply to make the Neo better. I remember trying a couple of different things with my team, my designers, where we took a one large dynamic driver and we also tried just using two dynamic drivers going into the same air cavity, perhaps a couple other things, but nothing was actually elevating the sound of the original Neo. We just feel like it wasn't cutting it. And there was one last configuration to try, and that was the isobaric setup. Even though there are a few configurations of the isobaric setup that you could use, uh, we opted to go with a setup that's called cone to magnet. What makes our implementation of these two low frequency drivers true isobaric is the sealed chamber that couples the magnet to the cone between the two drivers. The benefits of using the isobaric setup in our application is actually better damping. It also lowers distortion. We also get twice the power handling because there are two coils and two motor structures. As a cherry on top, it actually extends the frequency response of the system, giving us a deeper and richer bass. The next area that we wanted to focus on was improving the high frequency response of this in-ear. The solution that we came up with was something we call the TIA waveguide. We were able to really shape the sound uh, of the high frequencies that really completed the sound signature of, of this earphone that, in my opinion, I think just sounds amazingly beautiful and musical. As we've done in the past, uh, we continue to explore and evolve on new industrial designs. And with this, UIM, uh, we decided to give it a little bit more of a modern aesthetic and sharpen the edge on the faceplate. And to pay homage to Neo, we decided to use a beautiful purple abalone chip on the faceplate that is responsibly harvested from New Zealand. Such a unique and extraordinary earphone deserves a unique name. We call it Velour. Besides looking really pretty and just you could get lost in this faceplate alone, uh, for me as an engineer, what I really appreciate about it obviously is the sound. Uh, when I listen to it and when I compare it to the Neo, I find that this gives me more resolution in the bass. I really feel that isobaric system working where it seems like that the dynamics come through cleaner, even on very low bass notes, I still hear a lot of articulation. I hear more definition, a tighter bass, more controlled bass. The mids are still as creamy as they are on the Neo. So uh, that was one of the areas of the spectrum that we did not want to mess with. But I guess equally as beautiful is how the top end turned out. I've yet to find a recording that can actually make these sounds sibilant or harsh, which I think says a lot. There's also a feeling of a wider soundstage. I believe that that's due to the additional detail that is being heard. Uh, cymbals and hi-hats and uh, just micro details seem to come through so effortlessly. It's almost like you have a microscope on it, but yet, you know, you're looking at it from a distance. 
quite honestly, it has become my benchmark of how I measure or how I judge other products, including new products that we're working on today. I knew that we could achieve something extraordinary if we push ourselves, but I think we really hit it out of the park with this earphone. And uh, I do believe that we would implement the isobaric technology and the the TIA waveguide in future products because of just the amazing benefits. I think the ultimate goal is to achieve a big sound from a small earphone. What gets me excited about a product is when you can dream it, you can imagine it, and then after some hard work and some trials and error, it actually comes to fruition. <laughs>